Hey everyone, today I want to show you a flaky test uh, that's super annoying. You probably know this one already. When you start typing into your input and suddenly the text just disappears. Your test is still continuing to type, so what you end up typing ends up being something completely different than you have intended. So I want to show you how to debug this issue using Replay.io and then fix your test. So let's get right into it. So here I have a test, which if I run it a couple of times, we might get into that issue. What I want to write is this first name dot last name at example.com, but I just end up typing OM. Now this type of issue is especially annoying because it seems like the only thing that we can do to fix this is to wait and then hope that the input will be ready before we start to type in. But as you know, whenever we use waiting in test, what we are actually doing is just waiting for the application to finish doing its thing. So it might be valuable to find out what that thing is and then maybe account for that in our test or maybe even fix the application. So let's take a deeper look. I have recorded this test run in replay and when I take a look into this test, I can see that it is flaky. We have a couple of attempts that didn't go well until finally we have passed. So let's take a look inside and maybe take a look at this type command. In replay, we can go ahead and jump to code that was executed as we were typing in. So when I click on this button, this will take me directly to the component and to the line on change, which is triggering whenever we type into this input. So in replay, we can not only take a look at different snapshots and different states of our application, we can actually take a look inside the code and see how many times this on change listener was triggered. In other words, how many times was this function called and what was the value? So if I click on this plus button and add a print statement, I can take a look into this e target value. So let's type that in. Hit save. And now inside my console, if I filter out just the logs from my Google login component, I can see the value changing as we typed in. So we see F I R S T. And here we hit the point when our input value was deleted. So something must have changed in our application. And since we now know that there is a set email function, which will set the value, we can try to search for this function and to see whether it is used somewhere else in our code. So if I hit command F and try to look for set email, I can try and see where this set email is actually being used. So we see it defined over here with the default value of empty string. This set email error is something else. And then we can see it being used over here. And this is where the core of the problem is. Now, of course, this is a demo application. So I have intentionally created a function that will delete the input, but it's not so different from something that might happen in a real application. You see, when you have different inputs and forms, sometimes you have validators that validate the input that's inside. These can cause some timing issues when there's a slight delay between the input being rendered and then the validator being bound to that element. Inside this example, we're setting a random timeout that will do a couple of things. It will clear out whatever was written in that input before and then add a focused class, which will add a custom styling and then also focus user on that element. You might see this type of behavior in some of the applications. Whenever you load them, you will get focused right into the right place, either a search or a login form. So this is already valuable information. We got a class that's being added and we got focus. So if we want to stabilize our test, maybe we should account for that. So back in my test, I can add a assertion between this get selector and this type action. If I go ahead and add a shoot command and say that we should have class that's called focused and then save my test, this might help stabilizing our test. And you might see that there's a slight delay between when the application is loaded and when we start typing into the input. 
So this has already made our test slightly more stable. But we are relying on a class that might not always be there in all of the applications. And while I have seen this quite a lot in Angular apps and it has helped me stabilize the test, sometimes we need to choose a slightly different approach. This is where one of the Cypress commands can get really helpful and it's really underused. What we can do instead is to select a focused element. As a result, our test will get stable in the same manner and we'll start typing into the input only when the input is ready. This is of course not accounting for all of the situations that are out there. Hopefully I have demonstrated that looking inside the code and trying to see how different elements are handled can be very valuable in writing a stable test. I hope this was helpful. See you in the next video. Bye everyone.